they left trying to seek a better place where they can practice their religion. They wanted to build a society where they feel like it's perfect, a perfect Christian society, a city upon a hill, an example to the world uh, about how Christian life should be. So they got to the new world, but as it turns out, even though they were looking for religious tolerance, that's why they left, they weren't very tolerant of other religions also. Puritans were very strict about their religion. Opinions and views that are different from the Puritan doctrines about Christianity were not, um, were not accepted at all. So they were very strict about their religion. They were not very tolerant of other religions. Even views or doctrines that might be different from their religion, they don't like. So even though they came over here seeking religious freedom, when they got over here and they were able to establish their colony, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, they weren't willing to give that religious freedom to anybody else. If you're not Puritan, if you don't believe in what they believe in to a T, then you get kicked out of the colony. They often banish people who disagree from their colony. So if you don't agree with what they, what they believe in, you are banished from the colony. You are, you are um, pushed out of the colony. So if you look at all these colonies, right, the Puritans first settled in Massachusetts. In New England, there are other colonies, but here's how they were established for most of them. Somebody in the Puritan society disagrees with Puritan teachings, what do they do with him? They kick him out, and he establishes his own colony. That's how Rhode Island was established. That's how Connecticut was established also. People getting kicked out of the Massachusetts Bay Colony because the Puritans are jerks, and them establishing their own little colonies for themselves. From people who were banished from the Massachusetts Bay Colony. So uh, one example of that would be Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson. Um, Roger Williams questioned some of the Puritans' teachings, so he gets kicked out. And Hutchinson tried preaching the Bible. What's wrong with that? She's a what? She's a woman, which the Puritan society, they don't allow that to happen. So she also gets kicked out. So um, Anne Hutchinson, who was expelled from Massachusetts Bay from preaching the Bible as a woman. Preaching the Bible as a woman. Both of these guys ended up settling south of Massachusetts Bay, and they ended up founding another colony that they call Rhode Island. So they founded the colony of Rhode Island. So these banished people, who the Puritans didn't like anymore, or who they cast it out of their society, founded their own colony. It's the same thing that happened in Connecticut. They casted somebody out, they banished somebody out, and he ends up establishing his own colony down south. All right, anybody have any questions so far before we move on? Let's go to um, the middle colonies. So far to the north, so we talked about New England, which is at the very, very north. Now let's talk about the middle colonies. Middle colonies, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and Delaware are what we call the middle colonies. They have okay soil, not as good as the south. And they also have an okay climate. So agriculture is still a very viable um, economic means for, for the middle colonies because their, their soil and climate are pretty good. It's not as good as the south for planting, but it's pretty good. It's, it's, it's sufficient. So instead of cash crops like tobacco and stuff like that, they planted what they, we call cereal crops, grain, wheat, basically food. They grew food in the middle colonies. They are known as the bread basket of the 13 colonies. What that means is most of the food um, were grown in the middle colonies. Bread was grown, livestock was grown in the middle colonies. They're the bread basket of the 13 colonies. Food was grown there. 
They had ports for trading as well, and they also had some industry, some manufacturing. They built ships, um, they built guns and chairs and clothing. So not only do they have agriculture and growing crops and growing food, they also traded and they also manufactured. Which means that they have a what kind of economy? Mixed economy. Go ahead and write that down. They have a mixed economy. Not only do they have agriculture, they also have some trading, they also have some manufacturing and industry. Middle colonies are unique in that most of them are what we call proprietary colonies. These colonies were owned by one person. These colonies were originally owned by one single person of what we call a proprietor. Most of the time, these lands were given by the King of England to a single person. Maybe that person owed him money, maybe he paid for them, but most of these colonies, I think three of them, three out of four, were owned by a single person, by one person, a proprietor. <clears throat> the middle colonies attracted a lot of immigrants who were not English. So this is another special thing about the middle colonies that separates them from the south and that separates them from New England. Most of the people that live in New England and most of the people that live in the South, the white people that live in the South, where are they from? Which country are they from? What colonies are these? Whose colonies are these? There's England. There are England's colonies. So most of them are what? Most of them are what? You gotta wake up, guys. Most of them are English. Most of them are from Great Britain. Um, the thing that separates the middle colonies is a lot of the people that settled there were not just from England. Some of them were from Germany. Some of them are from Italy, Italy, some of them from Sweden. So we get people, Europeans, coming over to the middle colonies that are not English. So, how do you fill up this, the first bullet? They are culturally and ethnically what? Sorry? Mix is a good word. What else can you put in there? They're diverse. They're culturally and ethnically diverse. Unlike the other colonies, where they only had English culture, and most of them were Anglos, English Anglos, the middle colonies are more diverse. In terms of race, in terms of culture, they're more diverse. There are still some people that live in Pennsylvania that still speak German. Um, the Amish are descendants of these people. So there are some people in Delaware that still speak Swedish. Because of this diversity, the middle colonies are more religiously tolerant. They are more religiously tolerant. So they're getting people from all over the world coming to the middle colonies. So they need to be more tolerant of other people's cultures and other people's religions as well. So if you wanted a place where you can practice whatever religion you want to, you're not going to find that place. But the best place would be the middle colonies. Would you want to go to New England for that? If you wanted religious tolerance, is New England a good place? Yeah. Why not? Because who lives there? The Puritans live there. And are they very tolerant? No. no, they're not very tolerant. These guys, since they're getting people from all over the world, they're very tolerant of other people's culture and other people's religions. All right, so we're not going to cover all of the middle colonies. We're only going to cover one of them, which would be Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was owned and founded by a guy named William Penn. William Penn. William Penn. Penn was a rich guy. The king owed him money. Uh, but instead of paying the money, William Penn asked the king for what? Yeah. Land. He wants land in the new world. And that's where Pennsylvania is right now. Sylvania means forest, so the forest of Penn. Um, why did he want land? Because William Penn belonged to a religion called Quakers, or Quakerism. Um, Quakers are very different from other Christians back then in that they believed in pacifism. Go ahead and write that down for me, please. Oh, by the way, Penn was a Quaker. Penn was a Quaker. So let's go through what the Quakers believe in, what makes them so different. Quakers believe in what we call pacifism. 
What does pacifism mean? Peaceful. They don't like violence. They don't go to war. So they're very pacifists. Another thing is they're very religiously tolerant as well. Not to everybody, but people, Christians mostly. They're religiously tolerant. And they believe in equality for all men, or for all men. They believe in the equality of all men. They didn't think people are inferior to others. They believe all humans are equal to each other. Why is that different from what other colonists believe in? Because they have the caste system. In Spain, they have the caste system, but most of these English colonies, or in the Spanish colonies, they have the caste system, but most of these English colonies do not have the caste system. But most of the English, like the Spaniards, still believe that Native Americans are what? They're inferior to them. Quakers don't believe that. Quakers believe that everybody's equal. Quakers, like Puritans, were persecuted in England. So Penn wanted to make a home for Quakers. So Penn made Pennsylvania into a place of tolerance, not just for Quakers, but for all Christians. Not just for Quakers, but for all Christians. Catholics and Jews were also welcome in Pennsylvania. That's why in the middle colonies, you get a lot of people from all over the place because this was a very tolerant place. Started out by William Penn. The tolerance and the cheap land drew settlers from all over Europe. Because Quakers are pacifists, they even lived peaceful, peacefully with who? Native Americans. It's not going to last long though. After William Penn dies, that's going to be over with. People in Pennsylvania are going to go to war with the Native Americans just like everybody else. But while William Penn was alive, the Quakers treated them um, with respect and they didn't really go to war with them. And because they believe in equality of man, they were not fond of what? Slavery. They were not fond of slavery in Pennsylvania. minutes to study your notes. I'll give you a quiz. 20 minutes. Try to hurry. For the Kennedy University. Sorry? The Kennedy University. Well, no, because he's rich, right? And the king owed him money. But he persecuted the Quakers. your notes, anything on that is fair game for me.
those, if you want to go to the counselors, you should go. Mm -hmm. so they're missing a lot of classes right now.
Where's the period to the left
minutes, actually one minute, and we'll begin. <laughs> 